Here we are at Tate Modern for a brand new collection opening today. Uh, it's, a, it's a collab collection. Hilma Athklin uh, meets with Pierre Mondrian for the first time to present Forms of Life, which is a series of paintings, a couple of sculptures, 3D, like through their lives, sort of showing ways that they interconnected without never physically meeting. Without ever physically meeting, there's no evidence that they met over the course of their lifetimes, but I think that's part of what's so generative about the show and so exciting, is to show um, the resonances between them, um, even when they never met, the way in which they were both kind of responding to the cultural imperatives of their time at the turn of the century, a, turn, a time of seismic shifts, of scientific discovery, of new conceptions of religion and spirituality, um, that they each kind of take up and engage with in their work. And we've asked the visitors to kind of come on a journey with us into this sort of shared critical space to, to kind of shed light on the resonances between them, but also the divergences. I think that's important. This is not a compare and contrast kind of show. It's really just to think about the ways in which both artists who start out as landscape painters continue to ground their work, their radical abstract languages in nature as they engage with these different kind of ideas around the universe. I think in some ways, you know, this show chimes so much with our moment and our broader kind of planetary concerns because both of them are so um, attuned throughout their lives to the rhythms of nature and the kind of underlying principles, is how Mondrian also defines it, um, of our universe. And I think in some way this can elicit a greater sense of empathy or sensitivity for the delicacy of um, interconnected life. Right, and one of the things that we're really trying to unpick gently in this show is this idea that abstraction is a kind of rejection of um, the representation of nature. But actually, the, both artists really kind of close observation. They start out as landscape painters. They both paint um, flowers in very different ways. You know, Hilma, the botanical illustrations, Mondrian, these really delicate, um, sort of wild as well, flowers. Um, the tree, all of these undergird the abstract languages that they continue to develop that they both believe, I think, comes even closer to depicting nature. Um, in its most distilled way. So I think that's one of the things that we've been kind of trying to complicate in this show is it's not, it's actually um, abstraction, in the case of both artists, is a way of thinking through nature. 3D, so many of these pictures come to life just through the use of lines, straight lines. I mean, one of the things that we try to achieve, so the exhibition is structured by bringing the artists together in certain rooms and also these monographic rooms. And this room and the last one are kind of dedicated to the environments that both artists try to produce with their work. So here we come close to um, what Mondrian was kind of starting to do with his studios. He thought of his studios almost as total environments. He started using, using cardboard cutouts, um, colored cardboard cutouts and mirrors to kind of dissolve a sense of space and really to think about his paintings as um, small sections within a broader kind of environment, right? So he turns um, the frame uh, over to a diagonal shape, which in many ways starts to suggest this infinite expansion of lines, the idea that the lines meet at some point beyond the canvas, which I think is a really amazing thing. And of Clint similarly um, produces these large scale really radical paintings in terms of scale, conventions of form and representation for her time. Um, and she imagines that they will live in a kind of spiral temple and that there is a kind of ideal viewing environment for her work. And so each of these artists were trying to think about their painting in relation to a kind of broader social phenomenon. There are so many beautiful colours in this show. We've got a lot of primary colours in a lot of the works, but then in this in the temple room in particular, and there's a room around the side that's just these beautiful pastel pink colours and purples and violets and just surprising, no? A yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. I think that's a revelation for, for, for many. Um, but I, I want to just pick up on that idea of primary colours because one of the things that's really great 
about the way the Mondrian works are framed is they really enable you to come very close. And you realize that primary color, yes, he uses red in many of his works and blue, but they're never the same blue never the same red, right? And I think that's really important, that he's continuing to mix colors. Um, for him, it's so much about the painting process.